So I think we get the context, a significant amount of it, from Acts 17. This is Paul's second missionary journey, um, and he goes to Thessalonica. And uh, we read in 17 verses 2 and 3, And Paul, as his manner was, went in to the synagogue three Sabbath days and reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Um, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that he, this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ, right? So we get the sense that's what he's taught. We know from Acts that some people uh, believed him in the synagogue and uh, responded to his words, but others didn't like what he was teaching at all, and so started some persecutions. And so from three weeks is all that Paul had in Thessalonica before he had to leave. And I think that's really important for understanding what's in 1 Corinthians because his leaving caused some angst for Paul. And so as soon as he gets away, he's thinking, how are they doing? These are guys that they've only been members of the church for three weeks mm -hmm. how, and they're being persecuted. Are they strong enough? And so in chapter three, he sends Timothy back to make sure how they're doing, both physically and also spiritually. Chapter three, he comes back and he reports to, to Paul that they're doing well. And it's in that context that we have verse 12. He's responding to them and saying, even though you're doing well, the Lord make you and in, to increase and abound in love one toward another and towards all men, even as we do towards you. So I think this is really important because as a small um, infancy church members, they needed to learn to love one another and to have that unity and coherence that is going to help them in, in spite of all these persecutions. But I think the other sense is that it's not enough for you to just love one another, that you're going to have to learn ultimately to love even the people that are persecuting you.